Teresa Wilson, city manager. Um, so we meet again, unfortunately, um, to discuss some pending threatening weather, but we wanted to make sure that we, we at least touch base with the citizens of Columbia and Richland County and ensure the Midlands that again, all of your partners in public safety and education and you know, uh, nonprofits are working together with the city of Columbia to provide um, uh, real time information on the pending weather for tomorrow. And we, want, we really just wanna do this to remind our citizens to stay vigilant. We know it gets a little um, unnerving every time we have these situations with the weather, but it is so important to remember safety is first and to make sure that everything we do and are suggesting to you to do is out of an abundance of caution. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our mayor, Stephen K. Benjamin, and he will take you through a few updates and we'll also entertain any updates from our partner agencies. Thank you, Ms. Wilson, and thank you to your incredible staff. Uh, and these, we always appreciate our incredible city staff and our partners from the county and our school districts and all of our uh, partners, but the, in times like this, uh, we really see what incredible professionals uh, they are. I uh, want to thank everyone for coming here and thank our friends in the media of the Fourth Estate for the incredible work you do in helping us get important and relevant information out to our citizens who rely on us to share uh, the information. Uh, we all know that Hurricane Michael uh, is heading our way. Um, we are currently under a tropical storm uh, warning, uh, flash flood watch uh, tonight, uh, 8 p.m. through Thursday night, 11 p.m. Uh, there's increased uh, tornado threat. Uh, to the Midlands of South Carolina, high winds expect power outages, uh, rain three to five inches. Obviously, as, as you all know, if there's an emergency, we want people to call 911. Call 911 if there's an emergency. If there's not an emergency, uh, recognize that the um, uh, non-emergency number to contact is 803-545-3300. Again, 803-545-3300. Uh, we want to assure uh, our citizens that we're all working together, all of our friends and partners surrounding us, representing uh, the business leadership, civic leadership, nonprofit leadership that serves the Midlands uh, all so well uh, together. Uh, we have several of our uh, providers here uh, from uh, the Comet, and we're going to have an update from the Comet, some of our representatives of our nonprofit uh, partners who, who meet the needs of, of our unsheltered uh, citizens and our homeless community. Uh, working hard to make sure we meet the needs of the entire uh, entirety of Columbia's uh, citizens over the next uh, few days. I know that Richland County uh, will announce that they're working closely with the Red Cross as they do uh, each time. Uh, and There'll be a shelter opened up tonight at uh, Kilburn Park uh, Baptist, opening up at 8 p.m. at 4205 uh, Kilburn Road. And we've had close communication, obviously, with Palmetto Health, now part of PRISMA, uh, they are pre prepared and fully staffed, uh, um, according to their leadership there, uh, prepared for any eventuality uh, that might happen because of Hurricane Michael. And of course, uh, Chief Holbrook will reference uh, close uh, and constant contact uh, with the Sheriff of Richland County. He and Sheriff Watt will work very closely along with Chief Jenkins to make sure that we're providing a appropriate public safety uh, response. I do want to make one statement, then we're gonna, I'm going to step aside and let our subject matter experts and partners speak. I know that we all, um, not just in the Carolinas, but uh, certainly um, all along the East Coast, are suffering from a bit of hurricane fatigue, uh, and we, uh, hurricane malaise, and believe that it puts us in a position uh, where we can uh, very easily and dangerously fall into, uh, uh, fall into the idea that we don't need to prepare as much, because this is just another storm. Uh, this is a major storm. This is a dangerous storm. Let's make sure that we're preparing for any and every eventuality. I encourage everyone uh, to visit our website uh, at, at some point, uh, columbiasc.net, uh, and it's also, I guess, columbiasc.gov uh, as, as well. Uh, we'll also take you there. And uh, our staff has, has worked to pull together a good bit of information from the web, just in reminding us what to do uh, before, during, and after a hurricane. Some very basic things that we've all learned uh, living here in Hurricane Alley over the last several years, but it's important to remind ourselves that we must be vigilant. We must be prepared 
for anything to make sure we protect ourselves and our families and our property as much as we can possibly do. It'd be some simple things, making a plan, uh, making a disaster kit, making sure you fill your gas tanks, uh, making sure that if you can stay home, that you stay home, that you stay off the roads. If you stay off the roads, it increases the possible probability of you being safe and also increases uh, the possibility of our first responders being able to respond to those who may need their assistance. Uh, also, uh, recognizing the importance that, of the fact that more deaths and injury occur after a hurricane hits uh, than uh, during a hurricane. Uh, some very simple, basic points that it'd be worth having a refresher uh, class at home with your family this evening, making sure we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's to make sure we all come out on the other side of Hurricane Michael safe and sound. Uh, we will continue to share as much information as we have it, closely working with our, not just our friends here regionally, uh, but also with our state and our, and our federal partners, and we will push out as much information as, as open and transparent in a way as we possibly can to make sure you're prepared to do the things that you need to do to protect you and your families. Uh, so thank you uh, for, um, again, for everyone for being here. Uh, thank you to our citizens for continuing to share the good word. Let's continue to be Columbia strong and South Carolina strong. Let's take care of each other. We are our brothers and our sisters keeper, and we will make it through this together. Uh, we're gonna uh, pass it on. I think uh, Chief Holbrook, uh, you're gonna have a word. Good afternoon. Um, the uh, sheriff uh, sends his apologies. He had a, another commitment. Um, I really want to just provide some some reassurance to our to our citizens. Um, our, our public safety efforts, um, again, as we state always, and I think it's it's what we're most proud of is um, our seamless response in situations like this, and um, our continued partnership and collaboration with the sheriff's department and and the fire department and, and really just a team approach to, to public safety um, to reemphasize and restate what the mayor said really what is most critical to us is people stay off the roads and um, we couldn't be more proud of the citizens that heeded that warning um, just a few weeks ago when there's an emergency it allows us to get get to you to help um, to save lives and, and prevent injury um, a lot of this storm um, is going to hit tonight when people are asleep so You'll see up staffing from the police department, barricades are, are pre-positioned in areas that we expect high water. Uh, we again ask if you see water, you need to turn around and don't ever attempt to drive through high water. Um, but we have high water vehicles that are prepared to, to respond at, at a moment's notice. And, and again, we ask um, our citizens to, as the mayor said, have a plan, uh, partner with us to keep everybody safe, um, stay at home and be sheltered while we weather this storm together tomorrow. Thank you. Chief Jenkins. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Uh, just like Chief Holbrook stated, we're going to continue to work collaboratively together um, in public safety to make sure that we're able to respond to any situation that anybody may be in. So we, like I said, we're going to continue to work together. Uh, we are going to be upstaff uh, with our normal staff and and of course, we got people on standby just in case we need to call more, more help in. So we are, we are sitting on ready. Uh, just want to reiterate some safety stuff. Um, you know, we may have some down power lines, so I just want to encourage the folks out there not to go near on power lines. Treat every down power line as if it's live. And I know some people, if they lose power, they're going to do one or two things, either use a generator or use candles. Um, my suggestion is not to use candles because, especially when, it, when these things occur late at night or early in the morning, you have a tendency to go to sleep uh, with those candles on. Make sure you got a flashlight. And also, um, generators, just make sure that you're not um, running in garages or in the house um, because you want to make sure you, you're not getting overcome by the carbon monoxide. So just a few safety tips and just hopefully uh, we can get through this and just with everybody being safe. Assistant City Manager Sheila. Not sure how you and I were outside the camera shot. <laughs> we like it there. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, from a, a Columbia Water perspective, I want to assure our customers that, that um, we are in a high state of readiness. We have been preparing for several days, and um, we, are, we are ready for the challenges that may face us with this storm. Um, we are anticipating high winds and potential power outages. We've been pre positioning generators and, and testing, making sure everything's ready to go. Um, 
We don't anticipate any water or sewer outages or service interruptions, but if you do have any issue associated with the storm that's non-emergency, as the mayor said, please call our customer care line 803-545-3300, and our staff will respond as soon as it's safe for us to be out and, and, and to, to respond to restore service to you. You may be um, wondering about the health of our canal and the condition of that, and uh, we are monitoring that very closely. Um, we, are, we are controlling the water levels. Um, we have shut a head gate to, to limit the inflow in case the river level does rise. We're not expecting the type of rainfall event that would, would impact the river level significantly or the level in our canal, but, but we're taking precautions just in case. We have pumping and piping equipment on standby just in case something unexpected did occur. So um, we're in a high state of readiness. Thank you. Robert Anderson, Director of Public Works. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, from the Public Works staff, we were also prepared. We kind of kept our saws a little bit ready from the last storm. We know our storm drain system has been cleaned. We've looked at it again, made sure the flood prone areas are, have been cleaned. We've pre-staged, pre as the chief said, our uh, barricades in flood prone areas, which is, allows the police department or the Public Works staff to close the street a little bit quicker. We do not want you to drive in water that's over the road. Nobody ever knows how deep it is. But we also don't want you to drive around the barricades. The road's closed for a reason, generally. Our forester crews are on standby right now. They'll be uh, reporting to work about 5 a.m. in the morning for crews that we have any trees that come down. We want to remind everybody, as we did last uh, storm, don't grab a branch out of the road unless you look very carefully. We'd just soon you not grab it because there could be a power line wrapped up in that is still energized. So we would rather you leave that to the individuals that know what they're doing. The one change we have this time is our solid waste collection. Through some thought processes to make sure our crews stay safe with the wind speeds, we are canceling all solid waste operations tomorrow. We will resume them Friday. So if your garbage collection schedule or recycling collection schedule is on Thursday, it will be on Friday. Now, if it's on Friday, it will be on Saturday. So we'll resume our regular collections next week after that. Thank you. Maybe uh, some updates from our partner agencies. Uh, uh, how about you, uh, first, Dr. Witherspoon? Good afternoon, Craig Witherspoon, Richland School District 1. Uh, for us and um, for the districts, the concern tomorrow, especially in the morning, will be wind. When wind speeds get uh, at sustained winds around 30 or above, it becomes an issue for our buses. And the majority of students uh, in our district, they do ride buses and knowing what's anticipated in that morning time frame, we did see it prudent to uh, cancel school tomorrow. Um, again, because of that time frame when the majority of our buses would be out and about and as has been indicated by other staff, uh, possibility of downed trees uh, and, and flooding and so forth. So over an abundance of caution, uh, we have canceled school tomorrow. We'll continue to monitor, uh, certainly tomorrow afternoon if, if the storm uh, holds true to some of the predictions. Uh, tomorrow afternoon might be clear to go check schools and uh, those types of things and make a determination for Friday. Uh, but uh, the school district will be closed uh, tomorrow. Dr. Marshall and Franklin from Richland School District 2. I want to recognize the fact that Commissioner Amelia Mullenmackey is here as well. Good evening. We appreciate our parents' flexibility and understanding regarding the cancellation of school in Richland School District 2 tomorrow. The forecasted high winds, flash flooding, and possible tornadoes make traveling conditions um, unsafe for our students, our parents, as well as our school buses. District officials will assess the conditions of our roads and campuses after the storm passes tomorrow evening and will communicate with parents and employees thereafter regarding the schedule of school for Friday. Again, thank you for understanding and please be safe. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Uh, John Ando uh, with the comment. Uh, good evening, John Ando from the comment. Uh, for the present time, the comment is running regular service. We are monitoring conditions. We do encourage our customers to call 803-255-7118 for our inclement weather hotline to get up to the minute updates on any changes to the Comet fixed route and DART paratransit service. Um, if we do make any revisions, we will uh, notify the public as soon as reasonably possible. Thank you. The 
p.m. Of course, I did also want to recognize the fact that we have um, County Councilman uh, Norman Jackson, County Councilman uh, Jim Manning, uh, both here with us. And obviously, if, you, if there's a report you want to make, this is also your, your floor. Yeah. Okay, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you don't want to, it's good. It's okay. No, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I'd like, like to thank the City of Columbia Mayor and uh, City Manager for the work and the partnership they have developed well with Richland County. And for the unincorporated areas, um, falling trees is, is one of the most risks we have. So we're asking all residents in the unincorporated area to be mindful of falling trees and not to go around it. And for example, those who use wells with electricity, they may be out. So um, if you could store proper water for maybe, may take a way, day or two if we are falling trees. So I'm just reminding the folks in the unincorporated area to be mindful and vigilant to what's happening there. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Mayor Pro Tem Devine and, and Councilman Howard Duvall here. We're, we're, we've been blessed to have incredible uh, support and leadership from our federal partners as well. I have Senator uh, Grams, a district representative here, Yvette, and I have uh, Dalton Tresman from Congressman Clyburn's uh, office here. Uh, we have incredible nonprofit partners here. Uh, met earlier with the, uh, obviously the uh, Executive Director of Transitions, and we have the CEO of the United Way, Sarah Fawcett here and our, our chief business leader, uh, the CEO of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce, uh, Carl Blackstone, here with us uh, as well today. Now, um, Harry always tries not to speak at these events, and, and, and Missy, thank you for being here with John as well. Uh, but Harry, you always have something worth uh, sharing. Uh, is that me ringing? All right, uh, thank, thank, thank you for not going in my back pocket. I appreciate that. <laughs> Harry, uh, anything you want to share uh, sure. that we may, we may have missed? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just from the Office of Emergency Management here in Columbia, we're communicating with Richland County, the Emergency Operations Center there, uh, our state partners, uh, state emergency uh, management. So we're in constant coordination. If we need, uh, have any unmet needs or our partners here, we'll be doing that. We'll be uh, working, um, ready to go. What I would say is that we need our actions and your actions to be spot on. Uh, and what we mean by that is that everybody said here we want to stay informed, prepare, outreach to your family, friends, and neighbors, think safety, and on a moment's notice, be able to activate your plan and make sure that um, you can follow the instructions of local officials. Thank you. Um, and I, 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 okay. All right. Well, um, as, as obviously you can tell, we try our best to be as inclusive as possible. Everyone here got the same notice that you guys got. It's a very short notice. Uh, I'm thankful that as we prepare for each of these storms or potential uh, storms uh, that we've had uh, robust uh, participation from uh, members of Richmond County Council, uh, from our city council, every member of city council, uh, our school district uh, elected representatives, uh, and all of our, our, our partners as well. So uh, be happy to uh, try and answer any questions you all have. Uh, we, got, we, got, we got the whole team back here ready to, uh, to answer questions. So you can look at me, but I might pass it off to someone else. <laughs> What we do is we go out and check the storm drainage system. We pull the grates. We make sure that anything that's obstructing a grate is uh, cleaned out. We actually go into the creeks, make sure that there's nothing blocking the bridges. And if they are, we also remove them. Solid waste crews were out yesterday actually raking storm drains along with the street division to keep them free and clear. It's, and, a, a, and maybe a, a tad bit of a deep dive without going. Uh, too. And some of you, some of us know exactly where some of the more flood prone, prone streets are uh, in, in the city, the intersections uh, that we should avoid for some of us who are more uh, auditory learners. Uh, Main and Whaley Streets, Gervais and Lawrence Street, uh, Blossom and Henderson, Blossom and Saluda, Hardin and Santee, uh, Monroe and Maple, Wheaton Amherst, Adger and Devine, Wheaton Sumter, Wheaton Pickens, Hayward and Ravenel Streets, uh, Pickens between Wheat and Green Streets, Barnwell, and Pendleton Streets, Hardin and Reed Streets, Hardin and Calhoun Streets, Franklin and Marion Streets, Franklin and Sumter Streets, Columbia College at North Main, Bull and Laurel Streets. Uh, probably a perfect opportunity, of course, to, to remind the citizens of, of, of the city and, and the region that we, we were making significant investments in our stormwater infrastructure. Uh, that city council uh, voted just over two years ago uh, unanimously on a, a very first stormwater bond. 
uh, that uh, we have, I guess we have three projects or four projects, Clint, un under construction now um, with uh, another uh, close to 10 under design uh, that we believe will um, be the right amount of investment in hard infrastructure and green infrastructure to help mitigate the effects of storms uh, in, uh, in the future. Uh, I know that King Park is under construction right now, one on Bow Street, in North Columbia, and Harlem Heights uh, community as, as well. So uh, we're, we're starting to see the benefits of some of those investments already, uh, but uh, for posterity, these will be significant investments uh, that will endure to the benefit of, of people across Columbia, Richland County, and, and Lexington County for years to come. We also have our, our very first green bond being issued by the city in, in December. Uh, again, another investment in resiliency and, and green infrastructure. Obviously, who, who whispered that just now? Howard, was it, was it you, Howard? Uh, he, he wanted me to think that was my subliminal thinking, uh, and he was actually whispering to me. You know, uh, obviously, um, uh, we believe that uh, the folks, all the folks are standing around us have been uh, duly representing the interests of the people of the city and the region, working hard together to address these significant needs. Some of those needs are obviously uh, meant to be met locally, and uh, almost $100 million dedicated to stormwater improvements. Uh, uh, the aggressive uh, investments in, in Clean Water 2020 uh, have been, uh, have been uh, I think, revolutionary. Uh, we, we're, we're talking about, by the time we're done, um, close to three, over three quarters of a, of a billion dollars invested in our water sewer infrastructure. Some of the investments that still need to be uh, made in, in, uh, in restoring our, our streams and, and uh, our riparian waterways across the state are still very real. And certainly, uh, we believe and we continue to advocate, uh, particularly uh, with the assistance of our, of our federal legislators, uh, for increased investment uh, from the federal government, uh, particularly through uh, FEMA, uh, in, in mitigating some of the effects of Hurricane Joaquin, uh, the, uh, the restoration, the full restoration of the canal and investing in, in, in resilient infrastructure so that that canal, which was first dug by Irish indentured servants uh, to almost 200 years ago and stood the test of time needs to be built and rebuilt uh, to the standards that will help it uh, stand another 200 years. Uh, that is, a, is an exception that we believe that we prepare for in, in these, um, these unique times. So that, that's when the federal government steps in and takes all of our collective wealth uh, that we send to Washington, D.C. every April 15th and sends it back home, it repatriates it back home for these significant projects. But the things that we're supposed to be doing here locally, I feel uh, very strongly that all the few people around here are, are stepping up and making some things happen. Madam City Manager? I was just going to say, Mr. Mayor, too, just to reassure the public about the dams. And of course, we want to continue to work with state government on this, but the dams that are in the city limits, we do proactively work um, for them to be lowered. So Lake Catherine and Southeast Lake were lowered as well. Sure. And uh, Councilor Ray. Councilman Jim Anning, uh, a lot of the dams that broke were along Gills Creek that went up through Richland County District 5, 6, and 8, and those dams have been rebuilt. Uh, they were old dams that weren't up to standards. The new dams are, uh, been out there, and those lake levels have been lowered in preparation for this. So what was a great cause of one dam breaking another dam breaking another dam that has all been attended to since that time. Well, I think that's, and I got, no one passes out hard copies of paper anymore, but let's make sure all the members of the media get that. Thank you, the Councilman. Uh, the, uh, always a high level of concern. I think, I think you prepare for the worst, and you hope for the best. And it's so important that, again, we do not let um, storm or hurricane malaise take over. We've got to remain engaged if we prepare and prepare and over-prepare. Uh, and it saves one life, it was worth it. It was worth every hour and, and, and minute spent. Uh, so um, still gravely concerned. This is, a, this is a massive storm. This is a massive storm. 
And while uh, we're all we, we are all blessed, uh, but but the Midlands was particularly fortunate uh, with Hurricane Florence. Uh, we don't want people believing that that this is a non-event. This this is a big deal, and we need to prepare for it accordingly. So, uh, gravely concerned is a is a fair assessment. Uh, what, what we passed out again is a hard copy of of the, of the do's and don'ts. How do you prepare for a hurricane? We're going to again post it on our website. Uh, we're going to tweet it and retweet it. If you're not following us on, on Twitter at, uh, at City of Columbia, uh, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, spend some time with your family tonight over dinner as you're watching the news and just read over some, some little things that you can do, some that you don't even have to leave your house just to be prepared uh, for any eventuality. Let's just make sure that we, uh, we come out of this on the other side the way we all want to, safe and sound, happy and together.